Welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie, and today, boy, do I have a fun, I think it's a fun show because I had fun times making it and creating it. So I can't wait to share it with you. How is everybody? I missed you guys last week. Oh, let me bring up my chat, man, because I can't read that. Oh, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. That reminds me, Sandy, Mike. So today, I wanted to do something a little different. I did want to take you on a tour of a store. Now this store, I went to maybe two years ago, but I was coming home from Virginia on my motorcycle and I was doing like a fish shop stop. <laughs> I was like stopping in every state at different fish stores and this one impressed me, but I was on my motorcycle and I couldn't buy anything. Well, I could buy small items. So I knew I wanted to go back, and it's about an hour and a half away. So I went back last week, and I videotaped it. So I do want to show you that. And I have never done a store tour on my live, and I had to get rid of all the audio because of copyright. But we'll see how that goes. But before we get started, we're going to try this. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I got a passion for fish and exotics too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody. Everybody, it's Susie Q, and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics, too, so come along with me, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Nah, nah, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q, so come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q. <laughs> I do like that, you know. Oh, so, that's too funny now. I gotta remember, I just turned off my audio so there's no drip. I better turn it back on. Because if I play a video, there's some parts I want you to hear. But before we get into the video, I missed you guys so much. So... You guys ready for story time? Don't make fun of me, John. Story time! <laughs> I kind of saw that smirk going on. <gasps> Candy's in the house. Hi, sweetie. Oh, my gosh. It's so cool. Oh, Rob93. Look at everybody. I'm so hard not to recognize everybody because we got so many awesome people. And I want to go through and read the names oh, so, so badly. But I'm going to hold off for a minute. <clears throat> Last week... I stepped on a rusty nail and of course I was wearing my super duper heavy duty steel toed rubber shoes <laughs> said no one ever went right through my foot right through my shoe right through my foot so I was on my way out so now I had to call my doctor see if he would even see me but of course as soon as I said I stepped on a rusty nail sure so I did that Got my tetanus shot. Arm still hurts a week later. Mm. I, and I guess it lasts for 10 years, so that's good. Um, but then about a day later, so I got sick as a dog for a couple days. I was like, uh, I, of course, is going to blame it on the tetanus shot because I get that kind of sick with certain antibiotics. So I figured maybe it was in there. Who knows? But, mm. oh, yeah, Jeffrey, it was... And as soon as it happened, I was like, no, no, because I was, where, I, where was I going? I was on my way somewhere fun. Oh, Gary's house. I was on my way to Gary's house. That video is coming out Tuesday, guys. Oh, I just want to tell you all about the video, but it's coming out on Tuesday. My friend Gary from the Bucks County Aquarium Society hooked me up with live cultures and explained all different live cultures. I was just so excited. But I certainly didn't want a rusty nail to where I was headed so yeah yeah that was that 
Oh, look at everybody. This is so great. Oh, and I'm working really hard at opening the ponds. But I still have that is it oak tree, maple tree, maple tree. That's going to be shooting off the helicopters. And it's still cold and it's rainy. I don't know why it's so cold still, but not time yet. I have to remember that. It's not time yet. So just, because even right now, I think it's dark outside. It is. It is. It's already still dark outside. So, can you guys hear me? I probably should have started off with that. <laughs> Yeah, it hurt. Gary Jones, thank you, Tom. Yes, yes, yes. I did go to Gary's house, and he was so amazing. And and I'm I at the last second I said, "Do you mind if I record this?" You know, Gary, he's Johnny on the spot. He was so good with it. And I just started recording him while I explained the difference between my micro worms and my black worms and my infusorias and my what else did I get? Vinegar eels. He gave me so many different cultures. So I've got like science experiments starting plus the brine shrimp that I started because you know what I have, right? If, I don't know if you saw my videos, baby axolotls, audio's fine, awesome, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, heads up, I kind of knew it ahead of time, but baby axolotls are a lot of work. <laughs> oh my gosh. They are so much work. They are getting fed three, sometimes four times a day. If their bellies aren't pink, I'm feeding them. And of course, after every feeding, then I got to change the water. And I'll show you the whole setup that I got going on. But I'm so excited. My last count was 56. I think there was 35 eggs that kind of got fuzzy. They didn't ever turn into anything. But I'm still cultivating them just in case I don't know what I'm doing. Which I don't. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about the axolotl babies, but they're going to be a lot of work, right? That's okay. <laughs> I I was like a proud mama. Now I still have all the adults in the same tank because as I was grabbing out all the eggs, uh, there's a couple free swimming baby axolotls in there. So I got to just come up with something, and I got to come up with something quick before these females throw some more eggs and then I'm in the same same position that I was in before, right? So I'm trying to flip camera views before I get into the store tour. I do want to talk about this tank. It almost looks like it's one tank from where I'm sitting. Look at that. Could you imagine? This is a 29 gallon and this is a 55 gallon, but with the steam blue background and the same substrate, with my head in the middle, it kind of looks like the same. I could actually put a log going through here, cut the log, and have the log extend to make it look like the same tank, right? <laughs> Who does that, right? <laughs> oh, but I do want to talk about this because what a process. Holy cow, this was not my brightest idea ever. <laughs> and speaking of not so bright. I don't know if you've seen, I put together a little short. I was building my new, we'll just say enclosure outside and it was real heavy. And I had to make sure it's gonna fit on the stand that I built and I could not pick it up. But I set up some cinder blocks and if I got inside it and picked it up onto the cinder blocks, I could lift it and pick it and lift it and pick it and get it. So I got it up on the stand and I'm like, okay, it's up on the stand. It fits. It looks good. I got stuck. I couldn't get out. Like, I couldn't go over it. So I thought, okay, there's 18 inches to go under it. I'm thinking 18 inches, Susie Q's hips. Not, might not work so good. But I couldn't lift it off myself to get it off. It would have smashed. So, like, I'm going to have to try. <laughs> I really do crack me up sometimes because like who who doesn't think things through like that right please tell me I'm not alone <laughs> I go to go under and there's a rock wall on the ground I'm stuck I can't push my way under I can't pull my way back I'm like I don't know my neighbor's names over here so I'm like neighbor people neighbor people 
Then I'm screaming to a neighbor. Nobody was home. Nobody could hear me. So I started digging. On this side was dirt. I dug a ditch, put my hip into that ditch, and I was able to get out. Oh, my gosh. But, of course, I pulled out my camera, and I had a videotape. One of the most humiliating moments, you know, because... <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so, so much fun. So much fun. Whew. The log is a cool idea. Oh, I thought so. The coop debacle. <laughs> exactly. And I was telling John what happened. He said, oh, I would have just smashed that thing. It's not the first time I had to put it together. I put it together in the house because, you know, I wanted to sit in a chair, be comfortable. It was cold outside, cool outside. And then I put it together and realized it's not going to fit through any doorways. Take it all apart. Take it all outside. Put it together again. So I've already put it together twice. Then I had to build a stand and then so on and so on. Oh my gosh. I don't know how I get myself into these things. But yes. <laughs> I am having a great Sunday. I know that. Oh, the coop debacle. That's what I'm going to call it. See, yeah, thinking things through and having a plan probably takes some kind of skill. So, like, if I was construction and knew what I was doing, right, I probably would have known how to make a foundation, how to build a, a stand. For, I'm building it on the fly. I'm just trying to put down a cinder block foundation, but it was too far back. I couldn't pull it forward, so that was a waste of two hours I'll never get back, and... Then I'm just putting up one piece of wood at a time and then put it in like that doesn't look strong. I'll put a piece under here and I just built it that way. But now it's time to build a door with a hinge. And I think I better learn how to do that before I start putting it all together wrong. Because I want to get this lumber. Oh my gosh. I almost, I can't even say what I almost did. Like Kmart's commercial, ship my pants. <laughs> ship my pants. Because... <laughs> Sheet of plywood was like seventy, eighty dollars. I was like, I was gonna pick up a couple of sheets of plywood. I was like, well, that's not gonna work out. So I got one little four by four sheet of plywood. I was like, I'll make do with that one because I didn't realize how much wood went up. Still would have walked, wasted two hours. Yeah, yep, I, I did. That's what I did. So anyway, so that was my coop debacle. I love that. Outside. Yeah. So, are you guys interested in seeing the store tour? This is a store in Lancaster. So, I had to turn off all audio because of copyright. There's lots of music going on. And I thought I could just talk my way through it. And Swamp Yeakers, too. What? Lumber's outrageous. It was sickening. Sickening. So now I've built this whole thing outside, and now I have to, because I couldn't afford the pressure-treated stuff, i got to seal it anyway. So I probably should have just gotten the pressure-treated stuff, but I didn't. And now somehow or another I have to make it last more than one season by putting either paint, sealant, something on it. I don't know what yet. Something on it. I should probably do a video on it, but it's not fish-related, and I don't think anybody wants to see it. But on the way to this fish store... I picked up my friends, my fishy friends from up the street, right? Andrea and Joe. And they brought along some guests. So I'm going to try to put this on. And you tell me if you can hear it. I'm going to be watching the chat because I know there's a lag. So only the beginning of the video has audio. And the rest I'll kind of talk. But if you guys don't want to see this, just put in the chat. Okay, stop. This is boring. You know, I, have, uh, I do not have a problem with that. So this is that pet place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It was also told to me it was that fish place, or it was that pet place. This place was humongous. It was absolutely humongous. But first I had to pick up my friends. Here we go. What is her name? Silkaduck. Suckaduck? Silkaduck. <laughs> Silkaduck. Suck a what? And oh what, is God. this a boy or girl? It's uh, Roosty Roo, that's this a boy. Is, this is Roosty Roo. Oh. I this have silky chickens in my car. Roosty I'm getting bird. them. I am going to be getting silky chickens. 
two silkies came along for the ride, got in their own basket, and went all over the store. <laughs> I wish I had words for how amazing I fell in love with these chickens. Love at first sight, right? And so I ordered some chicks a while back when I first met them. But I told the breeder that I only want females. I don't want a rooster. I'm not ready for a rooster and all that testosterone attitude. I just want hens that are going to lay me eggs. Every day, fresh eggs. Like, what? From the cutest little animals ever. And so she says, I got about a week left before they're ready. Let's get back to the video. So this side of the store said that fish place. This side of the store said that pet place. So I guess it's known by both. But I went in and I just took a quick overview to see like it had changed a lot since I'd been there. So I was like, oh my gosh. But I wanted to show that it had like everything that I could possibly think of. Now, oh, they had mammals, they had the mice, they had the, uh, the reptiles, they had the stuff for the terrariums. Look at this indoor pond. You do know this is what I want to build. I want to build that indoor pond in my basement. Oh, look at that Sansevieria. Oh, well, it's not called the Sansevieria anymore, is it? It is, what is that? The mother-in-law's plants, not a Sansevieria. Dracania? Dracania? I don't know. I don't know how to say it. If I ever get chickens, they will be Brahma. Ooh, nice. Oh, you're not allowed to have roosters in the city. I don't live in the city, so that's good. Now look at this terrarium. This terrarium reminds me of what I want to do. Oh, look at this red, this frilled dragon. Now right there, there's the Agama. I'm telling you, I saw so many things. I had it, tried to keep my head about me. Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. So. As we're going through the store tour, I am going to be reading the chat called Chicks. Yeah. Where's JFK? Why are we looking at a sign on a wall? <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have explained that better. Roosters are mean. I did hear that. Swampy Acres, you live near that fish place? That means you live close to me. What? I live in Texas, and you can have everything in the city. You can have everything in Texas, man. Texas is where I think I'm going to go. We can keep a rooster and 10 hens. Maybe I should make a correction. Maybe I should find out what I'm allowed to have. I just know my neighbors have chickens, and my friends down the road have chickens, so I just assumed I could have chickens. Bad assumption, huh? I better check, because they don't do YouTube. I do. <laughs> So when we went through this, I'm getting dizzy. This I, I got to learn how to study the camera. I forced myself to go through all the aisles before going into the fish room. Because I knew the fish room was going to be the ultimate. Because they just have all this fresh water. They have plants. They have salt water. But I went up and down and I did get some. I think I got some Timothy Hay and some of the other things while I was here. They did have a bird section. I just got an agami. Oh my goodness, Bob. I'm so excited for you. Oh. Oh, that's so awesome. Is that Cassie's store? I know. This is in Pennsylvania. This is an hour and a half away from me in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's probably really close to King and Queen Cichlid, Scott. And, um, but this is where they... They had ordered a 50 gallon low boy because she's got baby axle. Oh, sorry, I got sidetracked with cute kitty. My friend has a, a baby axolotls that are already adolescents. So she's building up a room full of like 50 gallon low boys for all these adolescent axolotls, which is pretty cool. I was looking at their cages comparing to what we have around here. 
Yeah, we have about an hour and a half north of the pet place. Oh! Hour and a half north. Is that kind of like near Wilkes-Barre? That's northeast. I need to get a good stabilizer. Yeah, Kevin, I have a stabilizer for my phone, but I don't have one for my camera. And when I looked at the price, I was like, oh, heck no. Oh, thank you, Candy. Oh, Bob's going to be with with Haley. That is so way cool. Two for the price of one. Hope you're all well this Sunday. Thanks, Kev. Let me tell you, this store had everything. Some of these cat boxes looked like the emoji, the poop emoji, didn't it? <laughs> they had, ma'am, they had it all. They had it all. And I did like it, trust me. But I only had so much money and I really wanted to spend my time in, and I was focusing on corals. But if they had any of my fish on my wish list, which was lemon tetras on my wish list, really want them. German blue rams, or blue rams, or just rams. I'd be fine with any rams. Because I set up a, an aquarium just for them with the right temperature. But I have yet to been able to find any that I was like, oh, that's great. That was great. What else was on my wish list? I was hoping to get some white cloud mountain minnows. I haven't seen too many around here. I wanted to put them outside with the, in one of my ponds. So, of course, they had the pond thing. And you see these sponges? I thought I could use those filters in my do-it-yourself sump. But they're not really big sponges. They're more like big, wiry plastic things, which might or might not work. I don't know. I have to watch John from uh, KG Tropical's video again. Because I'm making my own sump. Oh, look at this salt water. I want to be successful at my salt water coral reef tank. I really do. It's just going to take some uh, steady as she goes. Hey, Pam. I'm trying not to... Uh, what does it say? It's roosters on the next street over, cows and horses, pigs and emu, and even peacocks. Texas has their own rules. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Candy, did you take my order a few days ago from the co-op? She's not working here, Patrick. I'm <laughs> sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> Candy, you could just tell me to shush up. <laughs> Who's that, George? That was a very nice pond selection. They had a very nice, um, like here, the aquarium section, but they didn't have any of the 50 low boys. So they said they had pre-ordered it, but when they got there, I guess they didn't really pre-order it. They, You would have had to pre-order and pay for it. So they didn't end up getting a 50 low boy. And of course, I was looking at the pond liners because I, Aqua Ball said, tonight, me and Aqua Funk. Oh, I have five, Ricky. Hey, Larry D. Larry D. So, Lord George and Susie Q. What? 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 <laughs> I gotta stop reading. Look at that shrimp. Oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. So, my pistol shrimp is doing really good. My little tiny puffer that's about that big is starting to grow finally, finally. So that's awesome. And then I was looking at their lights, which next, lights, pumps, anything like that. I was just like, next. We're about 15 minutes. We are about 15 minutes from Wilkes-Barre. Well, that's cool. I'm from Clark Summit. I'm from Lackawanna County, so I know that area very well. Things nice when I'm gonna use my emoji every time I greet punchy paints. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Look at this. Now, when I was here on my motorcycle, I was heavily into aquascaping. I wanted so much of their their aquascape materials. And now today, with my big Jeep, when I went there, didn't didn't tickle my fancy. They did have a good selection of food, but. 
ever since I've been using the Extreme from KeepFishKeeping.com, and I will put a link in the description be below. I haven't gone back to uh, some of the other foods that I've been using because they have such a great selection. Look at this, is gorgeous, isn't it? So when I aquascape, it's just random jungle. Hey, Dragon Lair. That aqua, look, oh. I can't even, I can't even. So they walked around the store. These silky chickens are awesome. Awesome. Oh, so I looked at this. I didn't think it's like Home Depot to me is like a big chain store. This was a big store, but it wasn't a chain store. Now this was the petting area, the petting zoo that was closed due to, you know, things we shall not name COVID. Um, this is beautiful. I did get some corals. We'll get into the salt water in a few minutes. But look at some of this high-tech stuff for your sumps. Oh my gosh. I was like, what? Oh, Northern Cambria. Okay. <laughs> I look at some of this stuff. I would love to have that kind of fish room that has all of this. This was beautiful. It is. I thought it was a very nice looking store. The staff was friendly. I got to tell you, I think we we're about five days too late because I think five days prior they actually had a sale. So, so many things were lost and gone. Why is this not on? It says I'm about to lose my battery. You keep watching this. See if that works. Did that work? Uh, my power is going to shut off. That's so not cool. No bueno. No bueno. So I'm just going to have to reach around and do something ugly. Oh, not what I had in mind, but I would rather do something ugly than lose my power to my laptop. Right? Did I miss something? Oh, we went into the fish room, the big dramatic entrance right here. So the first thing I did is I just walked down all the aisles and tried to get a feel if they were categorized like live bearers, uh, cichlids, tetras, or that kind of thing. So I knew, because I knew I want, I was hoping if I could find some lemon tetras I was really planning on it. And the funny thing is, they had some. Walked down, I think, the second aisle, and they had like four. I wanted like a dozen. I was like, wow, it's a good start. So I started, the guy says, tell me when you're done, and I'll get what you want. I said, well, don't sell these lemon tetras, because they're mine. I call them dibs. <laughs> and I started making a list on my phone. Now keep in mind, this was the second or third aisle I went down. There still had 10 more aisles in the fresh water. Then we had so many more aisles in the salt water. Guess who left without their lemon tetras? Me. Yeah. There was a beautiful rummy nose. I thought about the rummy nose. Then I got sidetracked with cute chicken walking down the aisles of the store. Like, who brings chickens into the store? So cute. So cute. But look at the discus. Oh. So this store was nice, but you're right. It was. It was. Wasn't that a nice piece of wood? 700 tanks. Fancy tail, I think you're about right. Let me tell you, this was so mind blown. Because not only did it. Oh, look at these frogs. But the, I don't think they were the dwarf frogs. I think they were actually claw frogs. I'm not sure. And I've never seen this set up. It almost looks like they put a coral decoration in with these uh, schooling fish. It looked good though, it looked really good. And I, I'm kind of upset that they didn't, that there was so, the music was so loud 
that I wasn't able to um, use any of the audio because of course I talked my way through the whole thing. Oh, the bushy nosed plecos, the blue eyed albinos. I guess they're not albinos if they're blue eyed, but there they go. See these rams? I got two rams. I got a male and female ram and I'm very, very happy. I put them in my tank and there's a honey garami and then my, my, my rams and they're doing very well. And since I'm making baby brine shrimp and I have black worms, they go crazy over it. Crazy over it. So I gotta say that this, this freshwater side. No, Kevin, I gave him the list. He forgot him. He forgot him because I told him I wanted whatever was in the tank, and I think there was like three or four. But my bags, my box, look at cuteness. Oh my god. Can you believe that's even a chicken? I cannot wait. And their disposition is so, so amazing. Now those were yellow labs, but, and I gave them my list. Da, 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 da. I got a box full of stuff because I had plants, I had freshwater, I had corals. I think I got another a clownfish and I didn't really check each and every one. Look at these peacocks. So I would say it's his fault because I gave him the list, but it's my fault because they're fish I wanted and I didn't double check. I didn't double check. I was just so overwhelmed with so much bling, so much fun, so much everything. So I have to say the fault is mine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I thought about them. They had they had some pretty cool looking cyclids, and, and these are my dolphins. Let me tell you, the prices that my these blue dolphin cichlids and the frontosas were going for, and then I look at mine over here. I'm like, um, wow, mine would go for a pretty penny. But mine are pets. They're not just fish anymore. They're they're just absolute pets heard when you have that much stuff though. It is hard. I did have that much stuff. So then we came into the salt water and I know salt water isn't everybody's thing but I know there's a lot of people in the chat that have salt water so I wanted to include it. I was annoyed Kevin. I, I was because I have a 29 gallon planted aquarium ready for lemon tetras and it's a, hey hey dragon lair hey 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 that's enough of that we're not going to be talking about eating 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 silkies and and that beautiful juicy black meat no look at that unicorn fish ah. yeah oh my so some of these fish I'm not equipped to, to take care of. The chicken almost looks like a puffy dog. It, it does. It's There's parts in the feather, I forget what it's called, I'll just call them spines, little tiny things that hold it together that make them look like feathers that the silkies don't have. So there's more fluffy and they can't really fly. They can kind of jump, but they can't really fly. And it's also not waterproof. So it's not like a layer down. So we gotta make sure with the moisture that they Oh, I've been doing my research. I'm ready for my chickens. I am ready. Oh, I hope I included the footage of the octopus. Because I was like, what? I I do like my, my corals. I do like my corals in the salt water. I started off with a nano tank. That's probably the worst size tank I could have started off with. I think it's like a... a 20 gallon saltwater nano tank, but that's what I started off with. I do have a 74 gallon saltwater that's no corals, and that tank I actually use tap water, but with my coral tank I use RODI water. And I, I did pick up a clownfish, and I started learning about the different care of the different corals. Here on the wall, they had a great chart. That really helped me tremendously. 
Now keep in mind, every time I went by something, I am just like marking down what I want, keeping my list going. And then I had to actually like cross things off my list because my list was far exceeded the money that I had. Quills? Is that what it is called, Pony Girl? Quills? Pony Girl, I like that. Pony Girl. Hey, Tien Aqua. <laughs> so, my coral hog grass, I don't know if you remember, I did a video on it. Didn't make it. Something happened. I'm not sure. I think he died and then the puffer ate him because my puffer's not aggressive. But, uh, my soul, what? Oh, look at this. Look at this amazing crab. I must have stood in front of this tank for a very long time. This tank, the octopus and the eel. So first I went through and just picked out beautiful corals that I liked. Then I went through and saw the price and went back and picked corals I could afford. Because holy cow. And, and this went through all different scenarios of what the needs are and the food requirements for the corals are. So then I had to make sure, just like my fish, I had to make sure all the corals I was getting would work well in a nano tank. Because if some like it super light and some like it not so light, I don't have the depth of a tank to split it apart. Here's the octopus. Now he's in the PVC pipe. I don't know if you could see him. I want to point to him. He's right there. Oh, I did point to him. <laughs> I was hoping that he would move. He didn't move, but the eel started moving and it was just a beautiful compliment. Both white, there he is. Look at that, white ribbon eel. Oh, oh bold mama, yeah, jumping in that uh, rabbit hole of salt water. So, oh, look at this bed of wall. It's almost all empty. We missed a huge, no seahorses. I missed a huge sail. The plant room was almost bare naked. I'm like, ugh. I was like really looking forward to some like super big sword plants. But. Impulse buy. I'm telling you, once I once I started getting into the salt water, ooh, it was kind of scary. It was kind of scary. It was absolutely going down that rabbit hole. That because uh, <laughs> now I had to do the RODI water, and then the corals need to eat. So somebody said that they were going to get a mandarin goby, and that to me is one of the hardest ones for me to take care of because the tank has to be very seasoned like I even bought copepods every week thinking after about eight ten weeks I would be building a colony of copepods but I couldn't supply enough copepods for my mandarin I would have if I'd look back now I would have waited a whole year of having an established saltwater tank before getting my mandarin but that's hindsight right that's absolutely hindsight so what did you think of that? I don't like the bed of wall. They are too cramped. I've never had a, a fish store, so I, I don't No, That just looks like all the bed of walls I've ever seen. I mean, some fish stores do different, but I don't know. The Mandarin will be the start. Oh, good luck. Good luck. You're going to be buying lots of live copepods every week so that they can eat them because they don't really eat the food, right? I just cut 10 new swords that were shooting off my big sword plant. Oh, geek boy. That sounds amazing. So, this tank, I did get two swords that hopefully will grow. This, they, I forget what he said this was. It's not a crinum. He said it was a sword. I've never seen a narrow sword like this, but... So, this... Tank. I know I'm babbling so fast, aren't I? I'm sorry. Let me breathe. 
How did you like the store tour? <laughs> like, oh my god. I'm just talking a mile a minute. I did like it a lot. I liked it a lot. I liked the fact that I had my Jeep and I could put stuff in it. I loved the silky chickens coming along. Um, I have a video coming out of the different corals that I got. The fish that I have. Um, not so much the plants because they're still in quarantine. Because this was still an older tank at the time. This was this is my old algae filled tank that had all my tetras in it. I had my the tetras in it. It had three large angels. So what I did is I put the three large angels in my 120 upstairs. Okay. Then I took the Buenos Aires tetras and move them and the uh, red and blue Columbia Tetras and move them over to a 40 gallon breeder. They may not be so happy because it's a little bit smaller tank, but they'll be fine. Heavily algaed. <laughs> so it's what they're used to. And it's almost, I think I'm going to turn that into a biotope. I'm still thinking about that one. But this is the tank where the backside was so water stained that I've tried razor blades, nothing. Vinegar, nothing. Um, I, I was at my wit's end, so I thought, let me get rid of the fish, move them around, drain it down. I put steam fought blue on this side of it, and then had John help me flip it. So now the steam fought blue vinyls in the back, this tank was empty in the front, and you could not see through the glass through all the white water stains. John came in with a, like his DeWalt drill, the 4-0 steel wool on the end, and he worked down this thing for hours, hours, and as soon as it dried, it came back. So, I don't even know. That is what it was told. The manor and gobies, I have some good local saltwater guys coach me. Awesome. So you should be doing fine. I, I only know my experience, which is like very little. I know how not to be successful with a mandarin goby. How's that? And that's not put in a brand new tank. So that was my experience. I loved it. Oh, good. We had a store like big. Let me tell you, it was worth the drive. The cruel and horrible no fish should be in such a small space. Yeah, I, I agree with that, JMF. But I don't know that they're there more than a week or even a, a couple days. I think they sell so fast, which is why after their sale, they're all gone. There was very few in there. And I, if they have this setup where I saw those little um, automatic water changers, so I know they're on automatic water change wall. So that's better than just being in cups. And so, yeah, I don't know enough about that to have an opinion because I've never been to store. So I don't know how to, I, I have a hard time with mine. <laughs> I just know the bettas that were in the displays looked gorgeous. They, no, well, not as nice as Lisa's. Like, duh. Not nowhere near as nice, but... So, but I do agree with you. I, I get what you're saying. Hellos. Media, live rock, substrate. Okay, they're talking. That's good, you talk. So I took this log out scrubbed it, took a razor, got all the blackbeard algae off. It took about four hours. I was covered because, you know, when I'm scrubbing with a wire brush, it was spattering everywhere. I didn't care. I just had to get it. I had to get it done. I took out the sponge filters and put in two aquarium co-op filters that have been seasoned in my uh, Trimax enclosure. Put them in here. Added the new substrate to the bottom. Now, I left my, my bottom dwellers in there. So there's probably about 10 quarry cats. There's a striata botiloch in there. I left all those in there and a pleco. And then I just added a topper because it already had about two inches of uh, eco-complete or something like that. I just don't like the look of eco-complete. So I do like the red clay. I don't know if it's eco-complete or pond stuff, but... I like that look. And then I got some plants. I got some more plants coming. Very excited. I got some plants coming from Aquarium Co-op. 
and and then I built this out of the wood because I have my pleco in here, so I have to make sure my I have a lot of good driftwood. That's just a lot of extra trident Java fern. But I want to fill in with dwarf sag, and I can see that as this is starting to dry up from what John did, that the white is coming back. It's, I just think it's going to always be there. I don't know, but I knew my whole idea for flipping the flipping the tank around was that I could constantly work on it because as long as it was in the back, I was never going to be able to work on it, and I, I couldn't hide it. Unless maybe if I put a white background up, which would have, I thought, looked horrible, but ooh. But ooh, 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 ooh. So that's what, that's what this was. This was a lot, a lot of work. So then I moved my Donnie NY Gold's Blue Angelfish over. There's a dozen beautiful blue angelfish and probably ten dwarf neon rainbow fish which I think another dozen dwarf neon rainbows would look so good in here. I don't want any other angelfish but these purebreds. This is, I think he said third generation. I just think they're gorgeous. So my new love has been sparked for my angelfish again. So I do like this tank, but this leaves this 29 gallon. Very established. The plants are good. Crystal clear, pristine. I moved the angelfish out of. That is what was going to be my um, lemon tetras. There's my lemon tetras, but I didn't get them. So if anybody knows who's selling lemon tetras, woo! Got a super chat, super chat. Bob Kaler's super sticker, $4.99. It's a character appearing from behind a cloud saying, hiya, hiya, that's right. Thank you so much, Bob Kaler. That is awesome. I'm trying to be fancy again. Boom. These guys, this they, they were in this tank two weeks ago. I feel like it's been so long and it's only I only missed one time. I missed one week and I felt like it was way too long. Because in that period, not only did I have axolotl babies i moved around lots of tanks stepped on a nail building a chicken coop what i'm gonna have chickens so excited so excited i don't think i've ever been so excited to have bird chickens and i'm hoping sophie oh and the parrot okay so sophie is sophie we're still making progress slow and easy Mr. Peabody, little munchkin there, that parallel. I have to start wearing baseball caps upstairs because she is no longer, he is no longer afraid of me. And he is constantly hitching a ride in my hair, on my back. He just clings to me. So while I'm wearing a baseball cap, at least then I can feel him when he lands on me. And I'm so worried that my hair is going to get stuck in his toes. You know how, like, if you have a baby, Yo, well, I did. I was worried about the hair just st strangulating some fingers and stuff. Ooh. Did they charge you for the lemon tetras? No, Kevin. I went back and looked. I was so upset, though, that I missed that they didn't put them in the bag. So I am on a quest to find these lemon tetras. You have a nice mint. Did they charge you? No, no, no. Okay. Taylor Aquatics is next with Haley of Oddball Aquatics. Thank you for that link. Chickens are so fun. Only birds I really like. Sorry, Sophie. No, I hear you. I hear you. I'm excited. And the Silkies apparently have a very nice personality. And I was so excited. I didn't know anybody who had chickens. So I had to text Amanda Lupton and tell her, because I know she had chickens and she loves them. But I got, I'm getting chickens. I'm getting chickens, and I just got an email from the breeder saying they should be ready next week. She'll know for sure whether they're hens or roosters. So, ready or not, which I'm not, because I'm building this chicken run by myself without know-how. I'm just making individual panels and then attaching each panel to each other. And once I have it around, then I'm going to make other panels and flip it on the top so that there is wire 
everywhere. And while I'm doing that, I have recreated a tortoise enclosure that is wired even, I dug up all the dirt on the bottom, put the wire down on the bottom, put the dirt back up, so now there is nothing that's gonna to get to my tortoises this year. Nothing. I'll be watching Bob after this. Thanks, Fancy. I think Aquaball said he was gonna go on. I think, did he say he was going on also? I think, I, did I get that right? I think, I gotta have to look. Oh, before I forget, before I forget, and I'm gonna try this, this might not work. Yes, it worked, okay. This is the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies virtual convention. It is coming up and it's coming up soon. April 23rd to the 25th. So it's a fish convention that you can do right from right from your, your home, uh, which I love. I love that idea. I don't know, I have never been to Connecticut to this, but I've heard so many different people who have gone to the NEC and it's almost like it's a whole bunch of different aquarium societies that put this on together and and it just looks like it's going to be a blast Let's see we're going to have and here's the part that so don't ask questions on this but they're going to have speakers they're going to have presentations photography competition so i don't know if scott's on here <laughs> oh tom i just saw that <laughs> Uh, he says, when you get tired of the chickens, you can have a barbecue. <laughs> Two points. <laughs> oh my gosh. Speaker presentations, online auction, NEC awards. Now the banquet sponsor and vendor sessions with giveaways. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but it's only $7 and I am so excited. So if you guys want to register, it's at NEC, I think I put the link up here, Yo, it's northeastcouncil.org, and it is April 23rd to April 25th, so it's that whole weekend, it's next weekend, weekend after, I don't have my phone, I don't have my phone because I'm looking up here, what? so that is going to be way exciting. Bold Mama says, be careful from the predators that may go under. Oh, I dug up that run as well. Dug the whole thing up that went down about, what's that, about 8 inches, 10 inches. It's got cinder blocks on the side. I put the chicken wire down, and then I put the earth back on. Then I put wood chips on. Then I put hay on. Then I put sand on. <laughs> so then I built it up. So I can't imagine anything that would be able to get under that because now there's chicken wire on all sides, top, everything. Everything. Because last year what happened with my tortoises was devastating. I don't want that to happen again. Like, uh, it's not going to happen. Dang. Going to have to go back to the beginning. Miss this. Hi, Katya. Katya 480. Ooh. I am. I'm trying really hard to be prepared. I am trying really hard to be prepared. But it's like, it's really hard because I've never had chickens. And from what I'm hearing from some people is chickens can live winter, spring, summer, fall, especially in the southeast Pennsylvania, outside all the time. Then I hear other people say, now silkies are more like indoor pets. I'm like, chickens indoors? Now, I'm country bumpkin. I'm from upstate, up in Waverly, Pennsylvania, up in the Clerk Summit area. There's my brother's, two of my, my brother has a farm. I had a farm before his fire. My dad had a farm. I've never had a farm. Never had chickens, goats. My brother has had tons of different animals, horses, geese. But I've never done this. And I'm excited. So I think I'm going to have two housings for them, outside and inside, while I'm still doing more research. They're never going to be free range unless I'm standing right there. Otherwise, they're only in the run because I don't know enough about them yet. But I'm learning, and 
I cannot wait because, you know, when we go live by the pond, they're going to be joining us. <laughs> and my granddaughter wants to have a show and tell for her kindergarten class. I thought to myself, Silky Chickens will be a good show and tell for people, especially children. So yeah, I'm on the board of her club, Executive Privilege. That's right. <laughs> and I get yelled at for just to eat silkies. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I, I'm only I'm only kidding, Dragon Lair. Chris Big says that to me all the time. He says that about Sophie. All birds are meant to be eaten. And I've been watching a lot of videos. So, of course, there's videos on the broiler chickens and the roasting chickens. And I don't know if I'll ever be that kind of farmer, but definitely eggs. I eat eggs almost every day. I love eggs. Cook them any way I want. I'm going to have eggs. And that's why I want to make sure there's no roosters. Because I don't think I want to breed chickens yet. <laughs> I wasn't going to breed axolotls either, <laughs> but guess what? I have axolotl babies. So this is so exciting, guys. I'm so glad that I was able to get caught up a little bit. I got so much more to talk about, but my time is up. I know um, Haley, I think, is it Haley's channel that's having Bob as a guest or, or Bob's channel that's ha having Haley as a guest? I also think Aquafunk is going on with Aquaballs. Or Aqua Balls is going on with Aqua Funk. I think he posted it on FishTuber notifications. Well, I'm not sure. Bob Kaler is next. It's Bob Kaler, Haley, Oddball Aquatic in three minutes. Thank you so much. There you go. I had a chicken and a goat. <gasps> a goat. Oh, my gosh. Don't get me started on dreams. So, I don't think I belong here in this part of the state. I think I need a little bit more land. I am running out of, I want my ponds and my enclosures and my outdoors and, and I, I really don't care about snow. I could be gone with snow. I think I need to either go to Texas or Florida. What's Tennessee like? They don't really get snow either, do they? You have to give me a hard time. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I just feel so good being able to connect with you guys. I thought it would be like a little bit of a break last Sunday, not feeling good, just lying back down, but I missed it. I miss you guys. I like the chat. I like this. I like chat and I like getting caught up. Aqua Funk as well. Thank you. I thought so, Candy. I wasn't sure. I thought so, though. Thanks for your live. Loved it. Ah, thank you, Fates Tales. I, don't, I didn't know how that would work out with the store tour and doing it this way, but I thought it would be better to do it this way then I don't know why I just I just thought so <laughs> so I gotta tell you you know how we're gonna end this right it's here so I like this song to get stuck in everybody's head hey everybody it's Susie Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too. So come along with me, it's Suzy Q. Hey everybody, it's Suzy Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I got a passion for fish and exotics too. So come along with me, it's Suzy Q. Hey everybody, it's Suzy Q and I'm here to show you just what I do. I have a passion for fish and exotics too. So come along with me, it's Suzy Q. Hey, everybody is Suzy Q. Hey, everybody is Suzy Q. Na na, hey, everybody is Suzy Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Suzy Q.